Hello folks and welcome once again as always to another helping of Mr H's Hot Pot and welcome to another new video. You join me today on this rather sunny morning out on Colpit Road which lies just off the Smithills Moors in Bolton which now lies in Greater Manchester but is traditionally part of Lancashire. And I've come here today folks, number one for a bimble to stretch the old legs on this gorgeous day and number two, to follow in the footsteps of an event that happened in 1896. And we're going to be taking a little look in a short while at a memorial stone that's been placed further up this road that I'm now walking along to commemorate this event. Now today, we all enjoy the right to roam. Each and every one of us has the right to cross private land using designated footpaths called public rights of way to go about our business and providing that we only use that footpath and we don't stray off it and we follow basic rules we're not impeded or stopped from doing so but that has not always been the case Hot Potters and in the dim and distant past unfortunately some landowners didn't like people crossing their land and using the public right of way. Now public rights of way have existed for hundreds of years but as I say some landowners just as they do today didn't like people using them and they would use methods to prevent the public from using those footpaths. Now whereas today the local authority will get involved and you know landowners will face severe penalties for trying to stop the public from using public rights of way, way back when because the landowners, especially the larger landowners, were very powerful, uh, that n never really happened. You know, what tended to happen was the police would either turn a blind eye or, in some cases, they'd even protect the landowner from committing these acts. Now, one such landowner who owned the land that I'm currently walking along now was Colonel Richard Henry Ainsworth and he owned this land back in 1896 and he was a very powerful man you know not only did he own Smithills Hall and the Smithills estate but he also owned Halliwell Bleach Works which is uh, near Moss Bank in Bolton so he had quite a bit of clout and his passion was grouse shooting he used to enjoy going out on his estate and putting these big grouse shoots on where he would invite other landowners to come and they'd have a day out doing it now, unfortunately for him, the area of his estate that he chose to do this grouse shooting from had a public right of way crossing it. And he found it very irksome and very bothersome having the public use this public right of way when he was doing his grouse shoots. So what he did in August of 1896, he decided to erect two gates across the public right of way leading onto his land near where he did these shoots, put no trespassing signs there and employ gamekeepers to stop anyone from crossing the land at that point. What he didn't bargain for was the reaction from the Boltonian public because what they did, they organised and staged an event called a mass trespass to go onto the land and challenge what he had done. I'll just let this vehicle pass here that's uh, coming up behind me. Just let them pass there. It is a bit of a narrow road, this culpit road. And the organisers of this event staged it for the 6th of September, which was a Sunday, 1896. And in all honesty, it was only open, probably for a couple of hundred people at best, to turn up and challenge whoever was manning this gate that uh, Colonel Ainsworth had placed there. It turned out that there was about 2,000 people set off from the meeting point, which was on uh, Halliwell Road, I believe, in Bolton. By the time they got to this point, there was 10,000 people walking along the road that I'm now walking along, approaching the gate that Colonel Ainsworth had had put up. So, needless to say, it, uh, it was a bit of a confrontation because there was gamekeepers at the gate, along with a couple of police who got wind that there was going to be this uh, mass trespass, and they'd come along to prevent a breach of the peace. 
Anyway, I'm now making my way up to where this gate actually is. So join me in a moment where we'll continue the story. Well, folks, I find it a little bit ironic as I make my way along Colpit Road today and I'm approaching the spot where this gate caused so much trouble way back in 1896 that there should be a modern-day Road Ahead Close sign placed there. It's a little bit spooky, that, seeing as I've come here today to make this uh, video. And I'm sure the ghost of Colonel Ainsworth, who's looking on wherever he may be, is rather proud of that. But just as the mass trespassers did back in 1896 i'm going to ignore that sign and walk past it and make my way up to this gate now that caused all this trouble way back when and here it is folks this is the spot where on the 6th of september 1896 10,000 people confronted a couple of gamekeepers and a few policemen demanding the right to roam and cross and use a public right of way now, although there's a gate there today, it isn't blocked off. You can walk through it, and we will be doing in a moment. There's just a, one of those little wicket or kissing gates just to the left-hand side of the main gate there. But just imagine if you was manning that, and you're just you and another couple of blokes, and when you look down this road here, there was an endless stream of 10,000 heads all marching up towards you. I should have imagined that uh, the old sphincter was going with those gentlemen as they wondered what was going to happen. Now what actually happened was, as the leaders approached this gate, a lot of excitement had started amongst the 10,000 strong crowd and a little bit of a scuffle broke out and they actually broke down the gates and all 10,000 people piled through and crossed using this public right of way. We're now going to go through it, as I say, today there's a little kissing style gate so we can get through it is unimpeded and the woodland trust maintain this path today and they do a damn good job so i'm just going to step through this and straight away you can see the original gate post those are the ones that uh, colonel ainsworth would have had placed here I don't think those hinges saw very much action, do you? And there's the corresponding gate post. And this is where the actual memorial stone is. You can see it there, that marks the spot. It states, Will you come or Sunday morning? And that was the opening line to a folk song that was created soon after this event. And it states, On Sunday, the 6th of September, 1896, 10,000 Boltonians marched by this spot to reclaim an ancient right of way over Winter Hill. The path is now dedicated as a public right of way for the enjoyment of all. And it was placed here on the 6th of September 1996, exactly 100 years after this event took place. Right then, I'm going to whip the camera around now and uh, we'll make our way over to the ruins of the shooting hut that Colonel Ainsworth used to use and caused all this bother, really. Now, a second Winter Hill mass trespass was planned for the following week, where around 2,000 people came up here to repeat the events of the previous week. However, once they reached the gate, they found no resistance. There was no gamekeepers or any police, and they just basically walked straight on to these moorlands. So it had been successful. And as we make our way up to the ruins of Colonel Ainsworth's shooting hut, it's worth remembering what those 10,000 people did back in 1896. Because, number one, they inspired another more famous event, although it was smaller, to take place 40 years later on Kinder Scout, where a group of people did exactly the same thing. They went en masse to a public right of way that had been blocked by a landowner and proceeded to walk across that land and you also have to salute what those people did both at Winter Hill and Kinder Scout because not only did they give us the freedoms that we enjoy today because I have no doubt that you know we would not have got the right to roam 
from Tony Blair's government had these people not set those wheels in motion all those years ago. But they went up against their employer, a lot of these people. I'm no doubt that one or two of those 10,000 people were employed by Colonel Ainsworth in some small capacity. Perhaps they worked in his bleach works, or maybe they even lived in a home that was owned by Colonel Ainsworth. You know, there was, there was tenants of his. So to go up against your employer and your landlord back in 1896 took a lot of guts because there was no such thing as employee rights that we enjoy today, although they are being eroded. You know, there was non-existent, basically. If your face didn't fit, you was out. You know, I've listened to stories been told by my granddad so you're only going back two generations and he told me tales that they used to look at your hands and if your hands were soft you was classed as you wasn't an hard worker so they just basically bin you off you know and you had to beg for work basically so to fall foul of the local landowner when they had so much power it was uh, it, you know it took a lot of guts really to do that so I salute these people and I also thank them for what they did because it means that I can now come onto these moorlands unrestricted. You know, it's, uh, it's now enshrined in law that we can do that. Anyway, I'm not far away from the ruins of Colonel Ainsworth's shooting hut. And this is all that remains of Colonel Ainsworth's private shooting hut today. It's located in a little clearing here, not too far away from the main path where those 10,000 strong would have walked past back in 1896. Now it's said that they made the way along that path over the hill and onto Belmont back in 1896 where they proceeded to drink the two local pubs in Belmont dry. Whether there's any truth in that or not, who knows. Likewise, whether or not there was actually 10,000 people or not, or whether that number has been artificially inflated over the century, who knows. But this remains here as a testament to that day, really. Now, I have a photograph from 2013 which shows this with the walls still intact. I'll put that in for you now. And then I've got a photograph from 2017 which shows it in part demolition. I'll put that in for you now as well. And then you can see what it sadly looks like today. We'll take a closer look at this now. But judging from 2013, I think it's a shame that the authorities, whoever they be, I'm presuming the Woodland Trust, who maintain this area, chose to demolish it because I think it would have made a cracking bothy. Now for anybody out there who doesn't know what a bothy is, it's a rudimentary shelter that you find mainly on fells and moorlands. And the idea of the bothy is that uh, walkers can use it as a shelter if the weather turns, which the weather can turn when you're on the fells very quickly. And this would have made a cracking one. Now whether or not due to the proximity and the fact that it's pretty close to civilization and they didn't want people coming here doing activities in it that uh, weren't related to fell walking or not I don't know but seeing as this is such an important event that took place and this is so close to the path where that event took place I think the th authorities should have considered it but that's just my opinion it appears to have been built out of loose stone at one time or another and then it was rendered you know using sand and cement to make it appear like it was built out of stone unfortunately there's no pictures online of this when it was actually used as a shooting hut so we've no idea of what it looked like back in the day unfortunately but a real shame just make my way past this carcass of something or another here. It just shows how unforgiving moorlands can be, even when you're just on the edge of them, really. And this is the back of it. Again, sadly, not a lot to see. 
few people have wrote the names on it to sort of mark the fact that it was here. But yeah, this is the area where the famous Winter Hill trespass took place. And I should imagine Colonel Ainsworth did his grouse shooting over there on that little bit of moorland, you know. Now my dad used to do a bit of shooting, but he, he did what was called rough shooting, where you actually went out and looked for whatever it was you was after, whether it be rabbits, ducks, whatever, where Colonel Ainsworth would have sat here with his chums and a hip flask and waited for the beaters to drive the grouse towards them, which I think is a little bit unfair, personally speaking, but that's just me. Anyway, I'm going to whip the camera around now, and I think we'll wrap this video up. Well, folks, that'll just about do it for today. As I leave the ruins of Colonel Ainsworth's shooting hut behind me, and I slowly make my way back to civilization, all that's left for me to say is that I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've certainly enjoyed making it, and coming up here onto the moorlands of Smithills here in Bolton, and taking a look at some of the locations and recounting the events from the famous 1896 Winter Hill Mass Trespass. And like I said earlier on in this video, if it wasn't for those people making a stance way back when, we probably wouldn't be enjoying the right to roam that we do today. Anyway folks, leave your comments below as always. I'm going to head off back home now to edit this video up ready for your edification. So until the next time, from myself here on Smithills Moor, it is bye-bye for now.